washing them down in the box. Dad's trying to fill this gravity box with water. Yeah. I almost got it. Oh, wait a minute. I left the gate open. It's not working. <laughs> All right. It's a uh, interceding day. Hey, Papa Bear. Yes, it is. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Pipes. yeah. Yeah, the pipes are gonna get the interceding done. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm gonna jam it in the ground. Oh god. <laughs> this is gonna be ineffective. <laughs> so before we start here, I thought I'd quick just give you a little overview. Uh we uh we've measured from the center, actually dad did this last year, and you might see there's a pencil mark here and another one here to designate where our corn rows are. And uh, it's pretty simple. We are just gonna take off some row units where the corn rows go. And then once those are off, we're gonna calibrate the drill with some seed and uh, we'll be ready to go. All right, we're all set. We got the drill loaded up. Coulter's taken off. Uh, so we're ready to start interceding. Dana's gonna ride with me for a few rounds or the, maybe this whole field. We'll see, we've got about an hour and a half before supper time. So we're gonna see what kind of ground we can cover. She's actually going to do a little bit of filming. It's always nice to have a camera person. A rare treat for me to have someone who can do that. So let's look quick at the drill. I'll show you. I never, not I never mentioned uh, us getting done taking the coulters off. So you can see, looking back here, we've got spaces in the coulters now, right where the corn rows are. So we'll be seeding our cover crop with the actual uh, working coulters uh, four at a time between the rows and then with two on each outside one But then they actually get kind of overlap the, with the area where the wheel runs it'll run again the next pass we come back so It ends up being four planting rows uh, in each uh, space between the corn rows and then the the seed tubes that uh, Are left open because we took the coulters off that seed just dribbles out on the surface of the soil and if some of it takes if we get a rain that's great, and if it doesn't, well, that's okay too. All right, so we stopped for a minute just to look things over and wanted to show you from the back of the drill here how this works, where on the previous pass, we got two coulters here, and now we're going the opposite direction and the big tire runs over those and gets two in there. So there's four, four planting coulters there, four here, four here, four here, and then the two thing over on the end again. So um, that's our coverage and you can see it just sort of scratches it in because it's not a no-till drill, but that seed will sit there and hopefully we get some rain here. There's a little bit in the forecast, but honestly, I wish it was a better chance, but uh, that would be enough to get this going. So we have to take advantage of the good weather to get the seeding done and then hope it rains after that. But I'm gonna turn the camera over to Dana for a little while and she's gonna shoot a little footage.
getting kind of chilly out here. It feels like a little like autumn. It's putting me in the mood for a pumpkin spice latte. I want to speak to a manager. Well, it's after supper time. I'm back out here trying to finish up the eight acre field. Dana left me, unfortunately. She had to go home. I put on my sweatshirt, but uh, still no pumpkin spice latte. Apparently it's not the season, it just feels like it. So I will uh, finish this field up tonight. Probably fill the grain girl up and uh, kick it again tomorrow morning. And by midday tomorrow I should be all done. next day uh, I've been out this for a little while just got done with some lunch here um, I don't know there's not much more video to take to show because it's just the same thing over and over again dad decided to fill in for me while I was having lunch so that this thing could keep moving along and uh, yeah we're getting the seed put down so it's going going really well and now I'm gonna take over for him so I'd say a couple more hours be all wrapped up with the interceding. I suppose while I'm waiting here for him to come back, I could talk a little bit about what we're exactly planting. Uh, if the wind doesn't disturb the microphone too badly here, it's a windy day today. Uh, we are planting about 20 pounds, well, the mix is 20 pounds of annual ryegrass, two pounds of tillage radish, uh, two pounds of bayou kale, and I believe two and a half pounds of crimson clover, something or something like that. Those two and a, two and two and a half pound ones I might have inverted a little bit, but uh, you get the idea. And uh, basically, it's the same mix we did last year. I wanted to expand that mix to have a little more diversity, uh, but we're still on a cost sharing program with our local soil and water conservation district, so we have to go by what their prescription is. Um, and we kind of work with them to design that, but uh, for various reasons, we had to keep it simple and just go with the same mix that we used last year. And in that case, we had some extra seed left over from last year, actually a, a bunch because it was, it's a long story. Let's just say we had some extra, several bags. So we got enough seed to do all our corn ground this year at the rates that I just explained. But then we added up the seed we had left over and divided that up by the 26 acres. And so rather than putting on like 26 and a half pounds per acre, we're actually putting on closer to 40 pounds per acre because we're incorporating that leftover seed. We're mixing it with the new seed so that in case it doesn't germinate as well, it's combined. But uh, that should actually help if it's a little bit drier year, which it seems to be so far. Uh, overseeding it a bit might help if uh, germination rates or we don't get a rain when we need it or whatever, we can still get a decent interceding stand here. So that's what we're planting. The whole idea is just to control what's in this corn and keep a cover crop in it as much as possible. We planted it green, terminated the cereal rye that was here, control the weeds, then get a cover crop in so you're now planting what's gonna be uh, growing in between the corn rows and not just letting it go wild. So I stopped for a minute because it was windy and I was watching uh, some seed blow around and I had an idea. Now remember how I said wherever we removed the row units then we just had a couple of seed cups here that would just dribble the seed out onto the ground. And that's fine but it's so windy today I was watching as the seed was kind of blowing away in the wind and especially the annual ryegrass seed and I thought gosh you know it's kind of too bad. I mean, I'm sure it's still ending up in the field, but maybe some of it's getting into the corn whorls. And so as a farmer, you just sort of like to see the seed get down on the ground or in the ground, as much as it gets in the ground here, a little bit. And then it occurred to me on this drill, all the row units have 
two ports. So I went and got the seed tubes from the row units we took off. And now on this one, I hooked it up to that unused cup there and just ran it back to the rear port on the row unit. So I'm gonna do that on all of them. And I've got about, oh, I'd say five or six acres left to go. And it'll be kind of a way when the cover crops come up to see if there's a difference or not. So there we go. Just sometimes it's the most obvious stuff and you don't think about it until you're really thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, that was profound. Anyway, sometimes you just get an idea because you're riding on the tractor and your mind is wandering and you say, hey, wait a minute. How come I never considered this before? This is going to be an easy thing to try. So then all the seed will get down on the ground. All right, so I finished up interseeding the cover crops yesterday. So all our corn ground now is good to go. We can just sit back and watch it grow. Uh, we could really use some rain. It's definitely dry. Uh, our tile lines are still running, so I know there's subsurface moisture and some of our low meadow areas are still a little bit soupy, but uh, the majority of the farm is feeling pretty dry underfoot and to the touch, so we could use uh, an inch, half an inch, inch and a half of rain, somewhere in that range, anything we could get really. There is some predicted for the next couple of days. Um, so I think that that's going to wrap up this little segment of the um, Ravenview farm adventure that we're on all together. <laughs> but uh, the next episode of this uh, uh, chronicle, we'll call it, is, uh, is going to be an interesting one. Um, I've got some good news, some bad news, and uh, probably as of tonight, I think we've made a decision there's going to be a major repair and a new product, and those two go hand in hand. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll reveal that when we get to the next episode. Till then, see you later.